This is lecture 21 of CS47, Computer Organization Study. In this lecture, we'll be uh, learning about floating point values and their representation in the computing system. So, there are three subdivisions of the topics. We'll look at the floating point representation in a, in a binary world and then we'll review the floating point challenges uh, in terms of programming uh, and also MIP support of the floating point operations. Uh, just to note that we won't be doing any like hands-on program with the MIPS, but we'll look at uh, uh, these MIPS, MIPS instruction sets and their characteristics. We'll talk about that a little bit. Not, not much serious programming around floating point in this class. Now let's look at the representation of the floating point. So just the integer support is not sufficient that I think we all realize that um, so far we discussed about inside computer how the different arithmetic operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication and divisions are done for integers. Uh, we all agree all can be done electronically at that moment, but a large class of problem that computer needs to solve or at least want to automate, we want to automate through the computer, are not an integer arithmetic problem. There are real numbers to be uh, to be computed, right? And real numbers are everywhere. Like, like there are many, many different constants around that, especially if we are, uh, let's say we are writing a scientific uh, like program. Uh, scientific program which crunches some uh, some scientific values uh, involving pi or Euler's number or gravitational acceleration, all of them are fraction numbers. So point is how are we going to represent that and operate on that in the computing system? Because inside computing system, everything is zero and one, right? The, then what is the concept we need to pick up to represent a floating point number and how they are done. To understand that, let's first understand two uh, representation on the real numbers. Okay. So one is the scientific notation, scientific representation of, of fractions and normalized uh, representation of fractions. Okay. So let's say I have a big number like this example, right? This number we can represent like this, like right? three point something one five five seven six into ten to the power nine. So we all know if there is a power of ten multiplied with a fraction value, what all we need to do is shift the uh, decimal point to the towards the right hand side. Uh, 9 times in this example, this power of 10, like this 9 times, uh, towards the right and whatever the number will be my target value I am trying to represent, right? So, and if uh, this decimal value is placed beyond the digits available, we just keep on adding zeros till we shift the decimal point uh, to the, uh, as a, within a position with a value of 10. Similarly, if we have a very small number like this example, we can also represent that as 1.0 into 10 to the power minus 9. So we all know if there is this, this power of 10 is negative, then we'll shift the decimal point towards the left hand side uh, to of that. Many. So we'll shift the decimal point 9 place towards the left to get the original value we are trying to represent. Now, these are scientific notation, okay? Now, what about this one? Are the scientific notation or this, right? They are practically the same values we are talking of. Instead of writing 1.10 to the power minus 9, we can write 10 into 10 to the power minus 10. Or uh, instead of writing 3.15576 multiplied by 10 to the power 9, we can write 31.5576. 10 to the power minus uh, 10 to the power 8. 
they have some value, right? But what we say, this is not a scientific notation. Okay, so scientific notations, first criteria is that your you have only one digit of the left hand left hand side of the decimal value, decimal point. So if your decimal point, so if your left hand side of the decimal point contains more than one digit, this is no longer a scientific notation. All right. Now we call these the previous representation also normalized notation. Now what are they? Okay, so like same values like 1.0 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 9, we can write it as 0.1 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 8. Similarly, this 3.15576 into 10 to the power minus uh, 10 to the power 9, we can write that as a 0 0.315576 into multi multiplied by 10 to the power 10, same value. Now there, these values are not normalized. This is a scientific but not normalized value. Now, where are we going here with the normalized notation? Normalized notations are scientific notation, but the digit at the left hand side of the decimal is a non-zero. So, if digit, look at that uh, latest example, its left hand side digit of that decimal point is zero. So, that's why we are saying this is not a normalized notation. Normalized notation is a stricter version of the scientific notation where it says, well, you are a scientific notation and also make sure that your, that one digit at the left hand side of the decimal point is not a zero and that's a normalized notation. All right, so similar to the decimal normalized notation, numbers can be represented in binary like something like one point, some xxx, some binary pattern of base two multiplied by two to the power y, y, y. That's also y, y, y also some binary pattern. All right, this xxs is a fraction bit pattern and yyy is a exponent bit pattern. So remember, we said this is a normalized notation, similar to the normalized notation. That means left hand side of this dot, mind I am calling it a dot for time being, uh, left hand side of this dot is not a zero, since binary has only two uh, symbols, there is 0 or 1, so it's always a 1 for a binary fraction representation, 1 dot something dot 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 multiplied by 2 to the power y. Now, now where this um, similar to decimal normalized notation, original value of the binary can be calculated just by shifting this dot or this point left or right by y, 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 y amount. Okay? And in this context of the binary values, this dot or this point do, are not is not called a decimal point, but they are called a floating point. Okay? So when you are typing in float type of data or double, which is double precision float, this is the origin of the data data type. We named this dot as a floating point and representation becomes a floating point representation and that's the origin of your high level language data type float. Let's take an example. Let's say I'm representing a value like 1.011 Zero, 01, zero, 01. So this is a binary sequence. I'm just omitting the base uh, for here. And this is 2 to the power 0, 01. One. Okay. Let's for time being uh, assume that these three bit, this three bit is uh, a three bit two's complement. Okay. So that my range is basically uh, from uh, 
two, three, four. Uh, uh, what would be the range? Range would be one, uh, two, four. So minus three, uh, sorry, minus four to three, right? Minus four to three. That's my range up in this example. But anyway, nonetheless, this is a three bit two's complement. So this means this zero one one represent a plus three, right? Plus three means I can shift the uh, this floating point bit three position towards the left hand side and get an bit pattern one zero one one dot. 0101 and similarly if i have some bit pattern like uh, representation like this the fraction pattern remains same but your exponent pattern is 101 which is basically minus 3 right uh, and in that case we shift the floating point towards the left hand side three position and we get an target value of 0 0.0010101101 Okay, so this is the target value. Now, how are we going to convert it into the decimal value or flow, uh, like real numbers so that we understand what is the exact value of this? Like we don't understand 1011.0101. So how do we do it? We basically do this thing. We convert the left-hand side bit pattern of the, of the flooring point just like we did a conversion of the binary bit pattern in an integer, like 2 to the power, so it is become 2 to the power 3 multiplied by 1, plus 2 to the power 2 multiplied by 0, then 2 to the power 1 multiplied by 1, and then 2 to the power 0 multiplied by 1. And then the right hand bit patterns are converted similarly, but here in this case, it becomes increasing order of power of 2, uh, I should say it's a negative since it's a negative number, decreasing order of power of 2 in that negative uh, number axis. So it becomes like we keep on multiplying by 2 to the power minus 1, 2 to the power minus 2, then 2 to the power minus 3, 2 to the power minus 4. So this example uh, is basically 2 to the power minus 1 mi multiplied by 0, 2 to the power minus 2 multiplied by 1, 2 to the power minus 3 multiplied by 0, 2 to the power minus 4 multiplied by 1 which then we can calculate uh, just uh, to the power of negative power of twos and add them up and that become like 11.3125 in decimal. How about this one? Similar, right? So since we don't have a component uh, in the, like zero is basically at the left hand side of the floating point. This integer part is 0. Fractional part we compute by 2 to the power minus 1 multiplied by 0, 2 to the power minus 2 multiplied by 0, 2 to the power minus 3 multiplied by 1, and so on and so forth. We just keep keep on multiplying them and add the values, and it becomes like 0 0.1630859375. So this is the concept how the uh, how we kind of represent the floating point or real numbers value in computing world. But wait a minute, this is not the, this is not the whole story. 